I'm Maya. And I'm Alana. And we're gonna talk about the Pachycetus Inatius. Yeah, we are! A long time ago, on an Earth far, far... Okay, not really far away at all. On the Earth we call Earth now, fish made the long and grueling evolutionary journey upstream onto land. They had to switch from gills to lungs, from fins to legs, and try a bunch of new strategies to not shrivel up and die in the intense dry sun. But once on land, they thrived and diversified to inhabit new ecosystems in trees, in deserts, and in the skies. But life on land apparently wasn't good enough for everyone because the group Cetacea made that trip right back to the sea. According to the fossil record, about 50 million years ago, the Pachycetus inaceus began the unusual transition from land back into the water. Let's take a deep dive into its journey. In 1981, paleontologists from the University of Michigan discovered the first fossil of the Pachycetus in Pakistan. This discovery was significant as it was the earliest recorded intermediate of a whale and hinted at the transition between the evolution of land mammals into whales. Overall, it helped paleontologists understand the origin of whales. Based on this discovery, scientists could now conclude that whales came from an ancestor that was a furry, four-legged creature that ate a diet consisting of fish and crustaceans and had web-like paws. The most promising piece of evidence was a similarity in ear structure that is unique only to members of the whale family. However, different from whales of modern day, they lacked the anatomical features that would be required for effective hearing underwater, thus indicating their terrestrial nature. Although no complete skeletons of Pachycetus were ever discovered, based on data gathered from multiple fossil sites, scientists predict that adults grew approximately 4 to 5 feet in length. As evolution favored more water-specific characteristics, the body became elongated and their vertebrae flattened longer and heavier, and legs became shorter, more lateral, and fin-like. Their nose also moved more dorso-posteriorly. The Pachycetus were found to have a diet consisting mainly of fish. This was based on their tooth structure, which included puncturing incisors and serrated teeth teeth. The molars also had inclined wear facets. These findings indicate that Pachycetus chewed their prey before swallowing. The teeth structure and diet of Pachycetus shows that they were at least partially aquatic, having to go out into the water to feed. The bulla vibrates in response to sound waves underwater, and the sound is transmitted to the malleus, incus, and stapes of the middle ear. Therefore, the thickened bulla is believed to be an adaptation for hearing underwater. However, Pachycetus had the same anatomical features in the external ear as those of mammals, suggesting that they could also hear proficiently on land. The Pachycetus also had other features similar to that of aquatic animals, including relatively dense limbs. Aquatic animals have dense limbs to prevent floating to the ocean surface. Since Pachycetus also had this characteristic, it suggests they may have walked on the bottom of the rivers and lakes. Although they may have retained the ability to run on land, the density of their limbs indicates that they most likely would have broken bones in an attempt to run. The dense bones, alongside the positioning of the Pachycetus eyes, slightly upward on the side of the skull, suggest that it hunted its prey from below. Based on its skeleton, there is an indication that the Pachycetus had strong muscles to separate the toes and they had webbed feet. They may also have had a large tail. Both these features make it very proficient in aquatic locomotion. So basically, If you took every evolutionary trend we investigated in the lab and reversed it, that's what the Pachycetus inaceus indicated. This is what happened for the Pachycetus inaceus to transition to the whales we know in the present day. The discovery of Pachycetus was groundbreaking in many ways. It allowed for paleontologists to link whales to their terrestrial ancestors. Many fossils were found in the following years that proved Pachycetus was the ancestor of progressively more aquatic species. You may think, doesn't the story of evolution go from water to land? Not for Pachycetus and it doesn't. (laughs)